right guys, I'm gonna be showing you how I save up to $2,600 using Kraken Pro for trading crypto instead of Coinbase or Gemini. Long story short, trading with Coinbase or Gemini always costs more money in fees instead of Kraken. And just knowing the difference can be the difference in you buying a new MacBook Pro or not. All right guys, so there's something that you really have to keep in mind. In the US, there are three big exchanges, right? Coinbase, Gemini, and Kraken. And of the three of them, two of them have been served well as notice by the SEC. And what that means is that means that they are basically going to be going to court to fight a battle, a legal, lengthy legal battle against the SEC. And that is Coinbase and Gemini, right? And when you fight court battles, that's gonna cost a lot of lawyer money. And I'm just not comfortable using any exchange Exchanges that are going to be involved in a lengthy court battle against the SEC. All right, so if you don't have a Kraken account, just go and create your account. It's pretty standard with the standard field, so just fill that out and click create an account. So one thing I like about Kraken is that they are very secure. So the first thing you want to do when you're setting up your Kraken account is verify your account, right? And by verifying an account, you basically provide your personal information, which takes one to two minutes. And if you provide your ID, like your driver's license or something like that, then you get into intermediate, which allows you to have a bigger bank transfer, unlimited crypto deposits, and 500k per day of cryptocurrency withdrawals. So when we're taking a look at Kraken with these options, you don't really need to visit account, you can leave that as a default. Notifications is something you might want to change. So if you go to notifications here, you might want to turn everything off if you don't want any emails from Kraken, because that's what I did. Documents is something that you need to do in order to verify. So you can see here that I am a green card holder, so I put in my green card and uh, captured my face for verification. And Dominion is my energy provider here in Virginia. So I provided that in order to get myself verified. Now the audit is something interesting because according to my account, apparently I have like 19 cents and I'm like, we're wondering where that came from. And because my balance is here, so it's like zero BTC and zero USD. That is where audits come in because they tell you where that is coming from. So they tell me that I actually have a little bit of Bitcoin here because Bitcoin up here is up to five decimal places. It doesn't go that far. I didn't see the 671. So apparently I have five decimal places of zeros in Bitcoin and then 671, which makes up for the 19 cents. Now, before you can go and buy cryptocurrency, you want to go to buy crypto and open this up in a new tab because what you need to do is you actually need to fund your account. And the easiest way to do this is by going to payment methods, add a payment method, and then link your bank account. So for myself, I use Wells Fargo, and then you're just gonna sign on with your username and your password to your bank. So once you've added your bank account, it should look something like this, and then you can go to buy. And you can go ahead and buy a certain amount of Bitcoin with what you have in your bank account. So with that, you have a dollar of fees and you can click I understand and then click confirm. But we're not gonna buy this way because we're smart people and we wanna buy in a better way. Now, if you had tried to click confirm on that trying to buy Bitcoin, you'd actually end up with nothing or an error because you haven't funded your account yet. So what you need to do is go under here in funding and go to your currency, your fiat currency here and click deposit, which is this down button. And you can fund your account by connecting your bank account again. And this is now connecting using Plaid. So after you have authenticated with Plaid, what you have is your bank account attached and you can just put in a deposit amount here. I'm gonna put in $500 and you can deposit your $500 USD. And then after that, just click confirm. So what we just saw was the fee structure of instant buy. We saw that with $50 that we wanted to buy, we had to pay a fee of one dollar that's a bad deal so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use kraken pro and to do that you can just come over here which is under this kraken icon and when you click new order you'll get tossed into this page now you never want to use the simple you always want to use the advanced because we're smart and what you want to do is you want to set the pair that you want to buy we're doing btc usd it's gonna be a buy and I am going to set the limit price to 29,000. So right now BTC USD is at 29,300. So I wanna buy a total of $50 here. The order type will keep at none. We're not gonna use leverage. It should start now and it's gonna be good until canceled. We're gonna keep the fee at USD. Let's post the limit order. Now let's hit buy PTC with USD and then we're gonna get an order confirmation. And you can see that we're gonna spend $50, but our fee is significantly less. It's eight cents versus the dollar with instant buy, right? 
That is because we take our $50 and we times it by 16% and that will give us that eight cents. So if we take 50 times 0.16%, that'll give us eight cents. So once you're fine with the order and you have money in your account, just click submit order and then you'll have a limit by order submitted. And that will be right here. And if you wanna cancel it, just go over here and click the X and that will cancel your order. So there are two final setup things that I want to go through and that is 2FA or two-factor authentication. So if you go under here in the drop down, security to a face settings, you get dropped into this page. You see, I haven't activated yet. So we're gonna activate that now. And you're gonna use an app like Google Authenticator to create the authentication codes. So after you've set up two-factor authentication with Google Authenticator for example, the yellow warning that you saw should now turn into something like 2FA app. And now you can go turn on 2FA for funding, trading, and everything else. So after you guys scan the key and fill in your authentication code, you get dropped into your funding 2FA settings. And you want to turn this on for everything and click confirm. Now let's do the same for trading. Again, we'll have to set this up. So this would be our third key. And let's just ask for this code when we create a new order and we close open positions. Cancel open orders is fine. And to go hardcore, we're also going to create a master key. So at the end of the day, you'll have everything turned on or toggled on. And on your Google Authenticator, you should have codes for each one of these. So you'll have four basically codes that are related to Kraken on your Google Authenticator. So as one more final precaution, let's go to global settings lock and go activate our global settings lock here. So more recently, what happened is that Coinbase has stated that they will be publicly fighting the Wells notice that was served to them by the SEC. So that means that they are going to war with the SEC and that is not good to hear for any of the shareholders. On top of that, with respect to Gemini, they are caught up in a debacle with Grayscale DCG, which are firms owned by Barry Silbert because they are losing a lot of money because of what they're doing with those funds. And there's an ongoing lawsuit with that too. So that's something to consider. So right now, of these three big crypto exchanges, only Kraken is the only one that really doesn't have any beef with anyone right now. And there's one other thing that I didn't mention yet. Of all the insiders at Coinbase, since Coinbase went public, more than $5 billion worth of Coinbase shares have been sold by the company's insiders. Now, when the company's insiders are selling stock like that, I am paying attention. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do now is take you through an example of the trading fees you'll pay if you're using Gemini versus Coinbase versus Kraken when we're buying $1,000 worth of BTC. So before we get into that though, I gotta get you acquainted with maker and taker fees. And this basically talks about the adding and removing of liquidity into an order book. See, I already lost you already, but I'm gonna make it really, really simple. So if we're talking about maker fees, those are basically where you're using limit orders, like how we did it in this whole video tutorial. What we did is we made a limit order to buy at a certain price that is not the current price. That's the key word, not the current price. When you do it like that, the fees that you'll make are maker fees. When you buy at the current price, on the other hand, that means you make a spot order, you buy at the current price, whatever price it is, you'll take it. That that is when you will take a taker fee. That is when you're removing liquidity. So basically what you need to remember is maker fees, that means that you are not buying at the current price. You're buying at some other price other than the current price. Taker fees, you're only going to pay that when you are buying at the current price or making a limit order to buy at the current price. Got that guys? All right, now let's move on. All right guys, so this next part is the part you'll hate because we're gonna start doing the comparisons between Coinbase, Kraken, and Gemini on their maker and taker fees. So let's start with Coinbase first. So with Coinbase, the maker fee is 0.40%. The taker fee is 0.60%. That means that if you trade $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, the fees you'll be paying in a maker fee situation is $4. In a taker fee situation, it's $6. Now, Gemini on the other hand, Gemini's active trader, the maker fee is 0.2% and the taker fee is 0.4%. So a little bit different, much cheaper than Coinbase, right? For every $1,000 worth of Bitcoin that you're buying, you're basically gonna pay paying $2 in maker fees or $4 in taker fees. Now the last one, Kraken Pro, which we looked at, the 
fees for that is 0.16% and 0.26% for taker fees. That means that if you are doing a limit order out of the current price, then the amount of money you'll be paying for $1,000 worth of Bitcoin is $1.6 in maker fees and $2.6 in taker fees. So doing all that comparison, we can see that Kraken Pro is the cheapest one to use in terms of fees. So all those fees doesn't seem like much, right? It doesn't look like a big difference. But what happens if you start trading $100,000 for Bitcoin, right? Then the maker fees in terms of Kraken will be $1,600, but on Coinbase, it will be $4,000. That is a $2,400 difference, right? And that difference will get you a MacBook. So I really hope you enjoy your new MacBook. Now, I'm not the big baller here that is trading $100,000 worth of Bitcoin in one go, but I just wanted to use that example so I could put $2,400 on my title. Other than that, guys, the next video you will want to watch is my next video that I made all about Bitcoin. So check that one out.